Greetings citizens, I am your host Jay Voodoo Child and today we are trying something new. I'm going to do a very unprofessionally attempt to do a reaction video. And strangely enough, it's a reaction to a reaction to actually a reaction. So it will be a little bit interesting. Um, this is a video by Odd Job Entertainment, which is one of the channels that I subscribe to for Star Citizen. I really enjoy his content. You should all check it out. It's fantastic. Um, the reaction is to something that was brought up by Salty Mike. And that's someone I don't follow. I don't care for him, his point of view, or what have you. It, it's just not for me. So, only by Odd Job Entertainment talking about his ideas about fixing PvP and how cargo relates to that was I even made aware that this is an ongoing topic. And he, Odd Job's approach to kind of solving this issue, I have issues with myself. So uh, I, instead of just laying them out in the comment section, I'm actually going to make my very first reaction video. So here we go. And um, yeah, we'll just kind of see how this goes. Again, completely unprofessional. PvP has a major problem in Star Citizen. That problem is, it's not happening. I know this because I am part of the problem. I'll dabble in Arena Commander where the stakes are extremely low, but due to the apparent gap in skill between myself and dedicated PvP players, I actively avoid it in the Persistent Universe. For PvP to flourish in Star Citizen, the game needs mechanisms that will bring me into the line of fire of PvP players. Right now, those mechanisms don't really exist. We can see some fledgling attempts at this in the form of missions that exist already in the game. Things like In the Wake of Disaster and ECN Network Intrusion Missions. All right, so I will pause it here. That was this the very first bit. Um, here, I'll advance to another section where uh, you kind of lays out the kind of preamble to what he's going to be talking about in the video. And even before this point, which is like only um, less than two minutes into the video, I'm already kind of like forming out my, my comment <laughs> to say, uh, yeah, there, there are other people that have kind of different points of view. And, and he talks about in the early going about, you know, this triggering people. <laughs> so it kind of did me. So Here's my comment reaction video. Oop, wrong button. Uh, yeah. All right, let's try this one more time. So today I wanna to talk about things that CAG could do today to make PVP more common, bring it to players across the board, and therefore start getting critical information about the way the game is shaping up. If PvP was much more common in the PU, there would be a period of frustration, but as players learned how to fight each other, I believe that it would normalize at some point. So while these points may seem one-sided now, it brings the game more in line with its proposed vision, and I believe they'd be a net positive down the line. Right now, how much data is CIG really getting about how a cargo ship feels against a fighter? This is critical data to have if piracy is going to be more common. So, what can they do? First... Alright. So, I agree with several kind of foundation of this video. That Star Citizen is an MMO. A massive multiplayer online game. And that it is an open world player versus player sandbox game. And I myself am a bit of a care bear. I like focusing on PVE content. I especially like crafting. And I kind of just want to do my own thing and not engage with other players. Um, for the most part. And Star Citizen may not be the game for me as it you know, developed because it's very much, and I agree, a multiplayer game. You know, the vast majority of the vehicles 
require multiple people to be a part of the crew. And because it is an open sandbox, people can create their own content by engaging with other players, either on a friendly basis or a non-friendly basis. And that's PVP. And all that can exist and will exist in the game that I'm playing. The point that I mainly disagree with here is that it's better off kind of forcing PVP on players who are resistant to that form of gameplay. And for Star Citizen to be successful down the road, it's very successful right now in its fundraising. But when it actually comes out and it's released, the more people from different points of view that it can appeal to, that they can find their thing, their niche in playing Star Citizen, the more successful, the more long running Star Citizen will be. It's got to have players doing their thing. And there's all types of players in the world. Um, in another game I was playing years ago, I was trying to advocate for kind of more PVP play, actually. And that, you know, the Care Bears in that game were kind of complaining that other people are messing with their game. And they were trying to change the game to exclude those people. And my point of view, which did not go over well, is that people, if you can do something in the game, there will be someone who does that thing. So the mere fact that that is allowed in the game indicates a kind of passive acknowledgement from the developers that we want those people because they want that income from that person doing that thing and that is fun for them even though it may not be fun to the vast majority of everyone else but it doesn't matter to the game manufacturer because they are a for-profit business they have to appeal to the broadest base as they can and with star citizen you know in in any game there is a balance that has to be made between the kind of PVE players and the PVP players. And they both have to understand that they are going to both exist in this game in particular. But how that works out um, will determine a lot of people's happiness. And if it's too far to one side or the other, then... CIG will lose a segment of its population. And, you know, certainly that's not good for the overall success for everyone. So that is one of the major points I have here. Um, in the rest of this video, and I'll link it in the description, Odd Job um, lays out kind of his thoughts on some of the things. They're kind of focusing on trying to create through... CIG influence trying to funnel players into interacting with each other and therefore increasing more likely PVP play. So let me kind of go for the summation and we'll go through that. So there's a number of overlapping effects. One, you increase the likelihood that players run into each other, and this leads to a higher probability for PvP to occur. And this increased player interaction also serves as a way to cheat the feeling of a living universe. Right now it feels pretty empty, but there are still a hundred players every time you log on. We're just so far apart that we don't run into each other all that often, except at major landing ports. This all lays a foundation for when other key technologies are brought online. Server meshing is still very necessary to increase player counts, but without ways to actually bring people together, will a server with 400 people feel just as lonely? 
Quanta is supposed to be the engine behind our dynamic economy, but it could still be a long way out. Can't we get some semblance of interaction before then, even if it means faking it to a degree? The things discussed here today are all things that CIG could do today to improve the experience of players across the board. In conclusion, CIG could start placing a lot more kinds of honeypots on rotation to push and pull players to different locations. They could also adjust commodity limits and reputation to diversify cargo ships and concentrate traders along actual shipping lanes. Then they can also tie legitimate cargo missions to piracy counterparts. Most of these could be in-game tomorrow, unless there's some detail I'm not seeing here. Any or all of these would have the overall effect of bringing people together and causing more interactions to occur. I think that this would be a net positive, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Other than that, like... And that was the conclusion of the video. So, I've got three points here. Um, the first one I covered in the comments of this video, in that Star Citizen is an alpha. And to me, there are so many game mechanics that need to be brought online and developed before Cloud Imperium can really start focusing on balancing things one way or the other for the eventual launch of the game. To me, that kind of balancing stuff all gets fleshed out during beta. And we are quite some time away from having this game go into beta. Now, Odd Job's kind of response is, and, and something he describes in the video, is that these are kind of fundamental core mechanics in question right now. And without getting data as early as possible, you can develop down the road to where you kind of get yourself into a corner and may not be able to get that out with, get out of that corner without, you know, by just rebalancing things that by that time, it could already be too late to kind of get the game that you want. You know, um, that is certainly a, a valid point of view that that could happen. I personally believe with that this game is not being made for a broad audience per se, and that it's being made for Chris Roberts. This is his vision of the perfect game. And he is going to, you know, continue working on this game until it's exactly the way he wants it. And he's certainly got, you know, we're at $700 million in, in investment and in pre-orders or not pre-orders, but, um, crowdfunding and, you know, granted a lot of that's been spent and there's a lot of money to be spent. So it will go to the game and, um, but with that kind of funding he can do in develop the game exactly the way he wants to. And Chris Roberts has stated several times and both he and his wife that, you know, they want to engage in that pirate gameplay. So I got to believe the game at launch is going to have plenty of pirate activity and how that balances out, I think can be saved until beta when all of the systems are available and you don't have to cheat to get emergent gameplay to fake it. Um, you will actually have all the things there to actually see how the player base will react to it and then tweak it from there as far as how you want to balance things. And you may end up going into kind of different development routes to kind of correct things and to 
get it to where Chris Roberts wants things. And I think that will happen. But I, a lot of these changes I don't think need to be made today. I think they can wait for beta. Counterpoint number two, and I've already kind of touched on this. I feel that the broader the appeal is for Star Citizen, the more players you're going to have. And after launch, those players are going to be contributing financially in some form or another. And the more funding there is to maintain the game, the longer it will last. And so by and over the years there have been huge debates between the PVE faction that doesn't want anything to do and is complaining that I do not consent to PVP so just leave me alone and to me that point of view is not realistic I think we consent to PVE or PVP play every time we play launch because that's what the game is. It has that element. You will encounter it. And those who deal with those situations are going to be more successful, successful and more happy with the game. But also, the PvP are trying to push things for their agenda and push back against the agendas of PvE players. And it's just a huge friction. And I think any kind of changes that really focuses on one camp or the other will alienate a large part of the potential player base for the game. And Star Citizen is very interesting in that it is crowdfunded and people like myself have a lot of money already invested in this game. They hope that it will be the game for them and if it's not they really don't want to walk away from all the money that they've put into it already so they will very vocally try and champion their gameplay and that's kind of difficult and to deal with um if you have a different point of view and you've got your money invested in. And that's also one of the reasons why on my channel I talk about the exit strategy. And one of those is if Star Citizen turns out to be a game that's not fun for you, then you should be able to divest all the money you've already pledged for, for it and do something else with that money. And so that's why I always want to have my chains giftable so in case i just want to give them away to people who are interested in the game that star citizen will eventually become or i try and sell them on the gray market or what have you you know i have those options and so this the widest range we have i think the more successful this game will be down the road after launch and to kind of focus on one camp and the PVP style play is, I don't know, I don't think healthy for the game. Counterpoint three. I believe that all MMOs and particularly sandbox MMOs function off of a principle that more is better. And there could be missions that CIG develops that says, we've got this thing to do, and I will take you there. Oh, by the way, I only have five seats available. I only have 20 seats, 40 seats. And in that regard, we can kind of get that dungeon or raid kind of feel that are commonplace in other MMOs. But outside of that, it's the players that are making the content, not CIG. We are the ones responsible for developing the meta and the counter meta and the counter counter meta and so on and so on. 
it's going to be the players that are really influencing how this game is played, both for PvE and for PvP. So back to that principle that I think exists in MMOs, that more is better. Now, more can be more bodies, more players, more AI NPCs that we are kind of commanding. More could be experience and how good those players are at playing the game. More can also be tools that are available in the game that enhance the performance of our PCs. And there could be other forms of more. But regardless of which more we're talking about, at a certain point, you will reach a number that can overcome any obstacle in an open sandbox MMO, be it PvE or PvP. You just keep on adding more on your team than what the other team has, what the other obstacle has, what have you, and you will come out successful. So, you know, I think inherently in this game, we have a incentive to bring people together to do the same things, to act as teams. And we're already starting with these multi-crew ships that are making this very obviously a group collaborative game. And I don't think that CIG needs to influence things to kind of get more of that right now to get data on how to develop the game further on because there's so many elements missing from the game. But essentially, we're already going to be naturally gravitating toward one another as the game gets closer and closer to launch. And certainly when we have all the tools available in beta, then I think that is the time to start tweaking. But those are the three things of why I think Odd Job Entertainment is completely wrong on this subject. But I do appreciate him coming up. His videos are very well done. I wish I could come up with that kind of quality. Maybe one day I will be able to. But go check out his channel. It's fantastic. And he could use the support. But, um, you know, thank you for watching this. And um, I please comment below what your thoughts are. What are your counter-counter thoughts on uh, my points of view? So thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, click the bell icon, all that groovy stuff. You know, I my channel could use a lot of love itself. But um, anyway, thank you. Take care. Bye.